The president and first lady holding a remembrance this morning to mark one year since Hamas murdered more than 1,200 Jews in Israel and took 251 people hostage. It is the worst attack against Jews since the Holocaust. Among the victims, Hamas killed 44 Americans and continues to hold four U.S. citizens hostage. Since those attacks, a war between Israel and Hamas has raged in Gaza. The Gaza Health Ministry is saying more than 40,000 Palestinians have been killed, many of them civilians. Here is Nicole Skanga. Hostage families and protesters stood in silence in Jerusalem as a siren sounded, marking the moment Hamas unleashed its brutal attack. In Tel Aviv, a man blew the shofar, a ram's horn used in Jewish religious ceremonies, to note one year since the deadliest attack in Israel's history. People also gathered at the site of the music festival, where hundreds were killed October 7th. 28-year-old Idan Shtivi was taken from the festival. After nearly a year of trying to secure his safe return, his family learned Sunday he had actually been killed in the attack and Hamas had taken his body. I feel that my heart is broken. And after one year of struggling, I cannot understand what's going on and I can understand that he's not here. Israel has been waging war in Gaza against Hamas since the attack. Tens of thousands of Palestinians have been killed, including many civilians. Millions have been displaced. Israel's leaders have vowed to continue fighting until Hamas is destroyed. But a year later, the group targeted the Tel Aviv area with rockets. Here in the U.S., there are a number of events around the country in memory of the victims of October 7th, as well as protests calling for an end to the fighting. President Biden and First Lady Jill Biden took part in a candle lighting ceremony, remembering all those killed and taken that day. While in Boston, ahead of October 7th, protesters called on the Biden administration to stop sending weapons to Israel. Nicole Skanga, CBS News, the White House.